there's an Adam Sandler film called That's My Boy that has one quote that I think I'm going to play you a clip of right about now. Chad, adultery is bad, but incest is bad. How is it going, guys? My name is Wonsie Burnett, and welcome back to yet some more Pokemon Academy Life. Now, before we get started today, I just want to take a moment to thank every single one of you who commented in the last video and all of the outpouring of support and love that you guys gave me over the situation with uh, me not being able to get down and visit my uncle, my uncle's grave. So I know it was a bit heavy to start the episode with, but I appreciate every single one of you that you know reached out and left a lovely comment. And I'm sure my uncle Dave would have been very, very, you know, very happy to to see that. I also showed some of your comments to my mum because she was very very close to my uncle Dave. He meant an awful lot to her and she took it very very hard when he passed and she was overwhelmed. She was very very touched and it left her in tears so thank you for that. Thank you for bringing some light to a very unfortunate dark situation and also a very big thank you to Freud, the creator of the game. Uh, they watched my video and took it upon themselves to plug me and explain my situation in the, the Pokemon Academy Life Discord and basically just, you know, told people, you know, go and show some support to, to Wonsie and showed me some very, very lovely comments. So I very much appreciate it, Freud. I had a very good relationship with the previous developer and I'm also... You know, looking forward to, you know, having a, a decent-ish relationship with yourself. So, thank you for all the support. Thank you for making a very, very amazing game. And, yeah, without further ado, let's jump back into it. Morning, Calum. Hmm. You seem nervous. I am tremendously so. It'll be alright, man. People love you. Even Roxanne thinks you'd be the best bet for the student council president. Even so. Alex, do you have any secrets? Huh? What, what, what do you mean? I... No. Ignore me. My words are spurred by nothing more noble than jealousy. I apologize for doubting you. But are you going to ask me how I've been doing so well in the student council election without having seriously tried? Oh, uh... Well, yes. But as I say, you have no obligation to answer the question, especially as I have not, in actuality, asked it. Right. I'm sure you understand how my mind could be led to wonder. There's charisma, and then there's... well, there's you. Alex, you want to be a Pokémon champion, yes? That's right. I want to be a diplomat. Really? Yes. It's a job that often shelves the personal desires of the one who does it. A good diplomat should have exact functionality of a phone, no more or less. I can see why membership in Kobacon's student council would be a very strong starting point, then. My thoughts as well. This is an international school that accepts powerful trainers from across the globe. It's no exaggeration to say our classmates could very well end up leading the nations I hope to serve. Why Kobacon, though? It's an amazing school, but mostly for Pokemon trainers, right? Hmm. Pokemon training is a required part of the modern diplomat's duties, though. You may be surprised how many international disputes are handled through Pokemon battles. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's just something so absurd to me. <laughs> Mr. President, this trade discussion isn't going so well. Should I go and get the Machamp? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. If I beat you in a Pokemon battle, will you send the extra military aid I need? <laughs> my god. How many? Several. Huh. That is surprising. The other reason I chose to attend Kobakan was to make connections, to sever myself from the past and form new bonds with people that I was inevitably going to, well, leave one day. I get that. We're only here for a year, after all. We're probably not forming any lifelong bonds during that time. 
Hmm. And yet, I find that not only did someone from my past follow me here, but you are here. Huh? I urge you not to take this as any sort of confession, but I find my enjoyment of your company extends beyond the simple joy of being with a friend. Um... I said do not take it as a confession, Alex. What I'm trying to say is, I came to this school with the express purpose of not caring too deeply about anyone I met here. And yet, less than a month in, I have found my plan derailed. Sorry, Caleb. Wait, should I be apologizing for this? I don't... I don't really know what the protocol is here. Well, neither do I. I still feel as though I should apologize, though. I said what I did just now, only to explain my suspicion is a trap entirely of my own making. You've done nothing wrong. Good to hear. Now, should we get, shouldn't we get dressed? Yes, the voting will be held in the auditorium this afternoon, so I might suggest we student council hopefuls get there early so that we might prepare the room. Oh yeah? What kind of prep do you think you'll need? I'm not certain. Perhaps none. Hopefully, Roxanne will let us use her podium. If not, we might have to fetch milk crates from the cafeteria. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Whoa, hold on! Did you forget about me? Hey guys, good luck. I'll show up to the election to vote for you two. Yeah, you two super deserve to be up there. I'll make sure... I'll make... I'm sure you'll make all kinds of good choices. Sorry, it's like half eight in the morning, so my brain's still a little bit foggy. I was meant to have work today, uh, but I got a surprise day off, so can't complain too much. Thank you for your support. We'll see you this afternoon. Let's go. <laughs> that was a nice bit of music dropping. I wonder if perhaps we should drop by the infirmary. Infirmary. Jasmine and Grusha may be... Alex! <laughs> hey, Leaf. Are you excited? Ready to march on into that auditorium and claim your role as the rightful dictator of Kobukan? Absolutely. My first order of business, appoint toadies and yes-men to key positions in the school's diet. Second order of business, order them to approve my appointment for life and beyond. What? And beyond? Sure. You don't think killing me would be enough to end my political aspirations, did you? Historically, that often works, actually. N not that I condone assassination as a viable method of transferring power to a new regime. I'm just saying, historically, it works. Psst! Co-conspirator! I think there's a rebellion at Bruin. We should probably crush that. Don't worry, I've got an inside man in the rebellion. We'd be ready for these schoolboys. They'll wet themselves with blood. Well put, Inspector. But who exactly is this inside man? Bonjour! <laughs> I might have guessed. Are you and Alex going to the auditorium? Le grand esprit de rec recontrant. Recontrant. I, le grand esprit se recontrant. Do you like my French accent? I've been practicing it. When it comes to actually speaking French words, I feel like I can get it down. But when it comes to the actual, like, French accent... Oh, so it would seem. You will pardon the self-aggrandizement, no? Like, I can't get the... English French accent down, but I love doing like the French accent, like speaking the natural language. Or so it would seem, if you'll pardon his self aggrandizement. Yes, we're heading there right now. We were planning on just going to drop by the infirmary, just in case Jasmine and Grusha are incapacitated, you know? That seems like a lovely idea. Why don't we go? Eh? Hey, come along, Caleb. Your work, I presume? I am shocked and offended, good sir. Far be it from me to cast doubts on the virtue of a lovely young lady. But that's not what I'm doing. You jerk. <laughs> hey, easy with the punches there. You could break my arm. And I'm going to need that to shake hands and kiss babies and junk. I really never would have uh, pegged you as a politician, you know. Yeah, I never really expected to... I don't want to read that! <laughs> I don't want there to be a clip of me saying that out there on the internet. 
I really don't. <laughs> oh, God. I never really expect... Oh, fuck it. Go on. All right. You know what? Just for you guys. Just for you. Yeah, I never really expected to be pegged, much less as a politician. But hey, you know, life's all about new experiences. If I suck at it, at least I know I was trying to help people. Right, I know people have asked this before, but what again are you going to help people with? I'm just kind of hoping I figure that one out if I get elected. When you get elected? Hey, arrogance doesn't beget strength. Alder said that. I assume it applies to a political strength as well. You got this, Alex. I believe in you. Thanks, Leaf. That really means a lot. So, hug for luck? A totally chaste pre-date hug with absolutely no expectations or handiness? Totally. Uh, are we almost done? Is that a Pikachu in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> oh my god. Why is it always with Leaf? Why is it always with Leaf? God's sake. You're hard. I beg your pardon? I thought- Oh, fuck's sake! Just- just take me. Just- let the river take me. <laughs> Out into the ocean, just sweep me away. <laughs> I thought you'd be soft and huggable, but your chest is hard. Oh yeah, I work out sometimes. Maybe you've noticed. You were totally tensing your muscles. Maybe a little bit. Well, I guess it sucks for you, I don't like muscles. Wait, really? I can't tell if this is a bit or if you genuinely don't like muscles. Yeah, no, I'm serious. Is that why you're so easily winded? You never work out and don't want to go swimming? You don't want to build muscles yourself? Well, that's it. A little bit. You really don't have to worry about swelling into some sort of beefcake leaf. Developing muscles takes sustained effort. It's not the sort of thing you can accidentally into. I'll take your word for it. Well, you can... Alex! <laughs> Great. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? <laughs> what is this, a crossover episode? <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, I'm wishing Alex good luck before he gets elected student council president. I'm not actually aiming for president. Pa! Student council? Sounds like lame nerd stuff. You should just quit. What? Yeah, there's no way anyone will vote for you. You should just withdraw. Don't even show up to the election. Um, no. I won't be doing that. Yeah, what do you mean no one will vote for him? You realize he's, like, really popular, right? Yeah, but you think you'll be popular after you win? Come on. Everyone hates politicians. You won't have any idea what to do. You'll screw up and everyone will hate you. I mean, that's... possible. Unlikely, though. Look, just don't do it, alright? You're already on the battle team, and you're doing alright there. You don't have enough time. You just need to focus on one thing. Yeah, uh, thanks for the concern, but you can shove off. Wow. Slappy's actually showing genuine concern, and I'm just like, nah, fuck you, dude. I'm telling you to butt out. Yeah? Well, I'm just confused as to why you're doing this now. You know, I've been campaigning for a month now. I've had posters up all around the school for two weeks. I mean, heck, you were in homeroom when your grandfather told everyone to show up to the election. It doesn't, it doesn't matter why I'm telling you to butt out. Just don't do it. Don't go to that damn election. Don't give your damn speech just to scratch your name off of the ballot and sleep the day away. Oh. Slappy's homeroom, like, he's dorm mates with Sharen, right? He might know something that Sharen's up to, and he might genuinely be trying to warn us here. Give me one good reason. Leaf, get lost. Alex and I are going to settle things. 
Oh wow, that's such a generous offer, but you know, I don't think I'm going to listen to someone who sucks toes. Wh what I- uh, No I do what what Impressive. She completely shot him down. I need to remember that one. Just- Just get out of here! Um, no. Kinda thought I told you that one. Do I need to explain the concept of taking no for an answer? If I do, I really feel sorry for your first boyfriend. Just- I need to talk to Alex privately! Just get out of here! No. I'm here to support Alex. That means I have dibs on his company. As opposed to you, who's just here to tear him down. You idiot! I'm trying to protect him! Protect him from what? Having a self- a sense of self-esteem? You don't know a damn thing about him! You only met him a month ago! I know him well enough to know that he can't stand you. So why don't you just smell us later and get out of here? You suddenly become aware that you are no longer a part of this conversation about you. Please! He's probably sick to death of you constantly hanging around him. He's just too much of a wimp to say anything. Sure's what you know, Slappy. We're going on a date on Sunday. What? You heard me. You don't... you... Look, I'm trying to... Ooh, I've never seen him so, like, cornered. Fine! I'll force you to quit! Get out your Pokeballs! Oh, this is the way it always ends up, isn't it? Here? Are you crazy? I'm stopping you from running in that damn election right here, right now! You have enough damn wins, just give this one up! Yeah, you know I can't do that. This is a non-combat zone. We'll make this quick. We'll be done before any teachers show up. We? Sure. You didn't think I was going to have a battle in front of you and not invite you, huh? It doesn't matter. I'll beat both of you. Now take your beating like a man. And a woman. <laughs> Damn. Oh yeah, I forgot he's got that mad Pidgeotto. Okay. Right, Fury attack the crap out of it. My only plan here is just to try and get as much value out of every Pokemon on the team. Because I know he's got a very strong team. And that Pidgeotto is a monster. Uh, I think we go into Ivy here. No, I don't want to waste Ivy now. I'm going to go into Barrow. Because I think Barrow can finish this with a quick attack. And we go for a pound as well. Yeah, quick attack finishes it. Then the Charmander's in, so we go for a Pursuit and a Thundershock. So we growl. Okay, cool. Magikarp. A level 15 Magikarp. Oh, it's got Bounce. <laughs> I like Bounce. Cool move. Does nothing. And it dies in one hit. Okay, the EV's a bit of a problem. I'm going to try out my new move. I've got Future Sight, baby. And I think this is Mud Slap time. It's not Mud Slap time. <laughs> She's got a Drampa? When did she get a Drampa? Hell yeah. She's going to be a problem. Yeah, this Drampa's a monster. Oh my god. Uh, Echoed Voice. Yeah, echoed voices. That that's busted. <laughs> hmm. When will you learn? But you, I. This is your fault. Hmm. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, it'd take more than Slappy being a jerk to get me off my game. Right? If that was all it took, you never would have left Pallet Town. Right. Oh, hey, I just remembered. What did Janine want to talk to you about yesterday? Oh, nothing serious. Just a weird little thing about my Dratini. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. In the city. You're busy now, right? Yeah, I should be going to the auditorium now. Alright, see you later. You sure will. Don't forget to vote. Mm, maybe. Can't say I'll vote for you, though. Dang, should have campaigned harder. The Leaf Lobby was critical. Ha, <laughs> I'll see you later, Alex. You wait around in the hallway for Caleb's return for a bit longer. This is boring. Since he doesn't appear to be going back, you decide to head to the auditorium. And he's already there. 
In essence, we want to portray ourselves as a unified force. Oh? Hello, Alex. Good to have you. Apologies for starting the meeting early. We weren't sure how long Leaf was going to have you. It's alright. What are we doing? Discussing our upcoming speeches. Kaelin was just impressing on us the importance of presenting a unified front. Yes, there's only six of us, more than last year's student council, but not too many to be functional. If none of us disagree with each other on any points, then there is absolutely no reason why we shouldn't all be elected. However, if any of us do disagree on each other's positions, we should make our deals now. The absolute worst thing we could do for our chances is get into an argument on stage. I'm certain that there will be no notable disagreements between us. Our policies are so uncontroversial, after all. Everyone is side-eyeing Shiren. <laughs> Shiren, you've been pretty silent. Look who's talking, Grusha. Yes, I've been silent. I simply don't have anything to contribute here. Kalem is leading these proceedings well, and I don't want to object to any of the positions you hold. Oh, how good to hear! And may I say that you're looking very sprightly. Thank you. I have found a new resolution, and was finally able to sleep well after almost a month. Brilliant! Apologies for harping on about this point, but you're certain that you're not going to bring up any issues that we might be obligated to disagree with, Shiren? Roxanne made quite clear that anything that interferes with the school's flow of cash would damage our cause and significantly. Don't worry, I assure you, I'll be quite restrained. Perhaps another could fight for my causes later on in the year. Hmm, well if that's that then, I suppose the only thing we need to figure out is who will talk first. Caleb, why don't you introduce us? You can give an opening speech. We'll all discuss our goals for the upcoming year, and then you can introduce your goals with a closing speech. I have no objections. Anyone else? <clears throat> I suppose the motion passes then. Hmm, <laughs> that's fun to say. So if I'm beginning, would you like to follow me, Serena? Always. If it's not too much trouble, might I suggest I go after Caleb, actually? Oh? I think it might be most effective if we give our speeches in order of how excited the audience will be about them so that we end on a high note. It's, uh... I know my positions and goals are important, uh, but I'm trying to help a small minority that exists in the future. I can't imagine people will be overly excited at my speech. Hmm, that makes sense. If we're going to order in order of voter appeal, then perhaps we should go me, Sharen, Jasmine, Serena, Grusha, Alex, and then me again for the wrap-up. That certainly seems fine to me. Though I anticipate the crowd to go wild when I mention the five-ply toilet paper. Perhaps you should save that for your closing speech, Caleb. Appreciate it, but no, you can keep that one. <clears throat> Very well. Huh. <laughs> Glad to see Chiren seems to be feeling better. Not that I really care, but why are you all interested in the student council? Grusha? What? I'm trying to start a conversation. We've got a couple hours to kill, and I don't want to spend that time just going in circles about how we're going to get elected. Literally all we have to do is go up there and not fall off the stage and we'll be fine. There's a bit more to it than that. It's alright, Jasmine. I can understand Grusha's impatience. I think we're all nervous about how things are proceeding. A word that comes to mind is glacially. Things definitely aren't flying along. Was that a type pun? <laughs> Oh dear. I think he needs to go outside and touch grass. This speech certainly isn't lighting any fires in me. <laughs> what are we all doing today? Oh, I don't. I'm gonna stop before I, I get rid of you all. <laughs> in any case, I aim to become an international diplomat after graduation, so student council, a quasi-governmental position that has authority over a great number of international students, seems like a valuable job experience. Hmm. I think everyone knows why I'm here. I just want to make sure the people who get into this school or the f in the future receive the same kindness and support I have. As was always the case, I want to modernize and uplift Kobacon Academy staff, systems, and students. What Sharin said, except I'd phrase it as, I just want to help people. And well, everyone keeps telling me to do it, so... Personal reasons. S Hang on, that's a bit shitty, really. You ask everyone else to explain why they want to do it, and then the person who asks doesn't want to explain themselves. That's not very good, Grusha. I don't respect that. I don't respect that. If you start a conversation, you have to at least actively participate in it, rather than just, you know, watching it. That's 
That's bad to me. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, well, um... Personal reasons. You, you too! What a mystery we are. Perhaps we'll all have the time and trust necessary to confess fully to each other after we've been elected. Now, Serena's only here to try and get in your pants, mate. I'm ready to confess now, actually. See? I called it, dickhead! <laughs> well, what should we do for now? I'm starved. Skip breakfast for this. Anyone want to head to the cafeteria? A splendid idea. Let's go. After we do that, we should probably don our school uniforms. Eh? What we want to emphasize more than anything else with this student council is that we're working together. We're a unified front. I think if we all wear our uniforms, it will emphasize that. Well, uniformity. Oh. Do you have a problem, Serena? No, I just thought this outfit was rather cute. It most certainly is, but if you can sacrifice your impeccable fashion sense for the rest of this council, we'd be very appreciative. Oh, all right then. <laughs> My god. You head to the cafeteria together and eat a hearty breakfast. What do we eat for breakfast? What, what do we have? Dot, dot, dot. Why are you staring? Apologies, it's just... Are you going to keep that scarf on for our entire meal? That was the plan, yeah. Are you planning on wearing it over your uniform, too? Pretty much. Hmm. Alright then. <laughs> Eventually, the student council hope will start leaving. You head back to your dorm and grab your uniform. Head over to the student center to heal your party, and then back to the auditorium. I don't think you needed a heal, Ryan. By the time you arrive back at the auditorium, it's full of people milling about and talking anime, animatedly. Somehow, banners featuring the candidates have been put up. The entire room has the atmosphere of a party, more so than a formal political event. Good turnout. Hmm. Commendations to you, Alex. Your idea to run a voting campaign was clearly a success. Hey, all I did was suggest it. You and Serena figured out how to make it happen. Even so, credit where it's due. Nervous, Kalen? Quite so. This event could very well decide the trajectory of my future career. Possibly even multiple of our careers, depending on where you all want to be in the future. So, yes. Nervous, but excited in equal measure. It's been a pleasure to go through this with all of you. Hopefully our efforts have paid off. Especially you, Shiren. I'm sorry not everything went as you wanted it, but you set the pace for us, and your passion spurred us along. I'm grateful for that. It is my pleasure to help in any way I can. <laughs> he didn't seem happy about that. Hey, happy election day, you guys! I want to show your support for the candidates. Just buy these unofficial candidate badges! Gardenia brandishes a handful of pins bearing slogans such as Kalem Loves Clubs, Serena Squad, Jasmine's No Joke, and Shiren. <laughs> Just Shiren. Just 300 Poké Dollars, and if you... Ah! What a wonderful opportunity! I was just looking for you guys! So I've taken the liberty of creating unofficial badges supporting you guys, basically acting as a pro bono campaign manager. No, no, I won't take any payment, I insist. I do this out of love of democracy. However, I think we could massively expand our operations into a mutually profitable way with just a bit of buy-in from you guys. I'm interested. Alex. <laughs> awesome! See, now this is a candidate with a head on his shoulders. All I need is a little endorsement of these pins, and then I can advertise them as unofficial, <laughs> official candidate badges. I've done a bit of market research, and I predict that I could see an increase in profits by 34% if you give me the go-ahead. All this for 34%? Hey, it takes me like five minutes to get your endorsement. I'm still earning money per hour right now. But the time I'm spending trying to convince you all will stop being worth it as compared to the potential extra profit at the seven minute mark, so I'm kind of going to have to rush you along. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Need me to sign anything? Grusha? Yeah, if you could just sign here. I don't particularly think there's anything too wrong with it, Caleb. I'm always leery of allowing money to be involved in politics, but, well, I don't see anything too offensive about the idea as a whole, either. Stop being so serious. It's free money, and this is a school student council. We're not going to break the democratic system by endorsing some badges with our faces on it. I'm not sure. 
Well, what about you, Alex? You want a little cash? If you just give me your endorsement, I'll give you a nice $500. Or, if you've got the guts and brains to think really long term, I'll consider your endorsement worth a $1,000 investment in my side projects. You can do the math on that, right? It pays itself back in just 10 business days. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me, buddy. It's always a hustle with you, isn't it? It's kind of like breathing for me. If you're not hustling, then you're losing is my mantra. Sounds like an incredibly stressful life. That being said, I mean, an investment in her business is already making me money. <sighs> I'll take the $1,000 investment. Go on. <laughs> you invested $1,000. Your total investment is now $2,000. Double the profits. <laughs> Oh, God. I'm really interested in, like, investment at the moment. Like, I think that if if you offered me a way where you said, right, you give me a grand, and I'll give you £50 a day, every day going forward, I'd probably take it, as long as it was, like, guaranteed. But there would never be anything as serious as that. Like, 5% a day or something like that? That's insane. Like, that would never happen in real life. So, Gardenia's just a really good hustler, I think. <laughs> Gardenia does her business with the other student council hopefuls who are willing to endorse her badges, then happily skips off before anyone can think of the long-term consequences of their actions. Slowly, the afternoon approaches as the moment for speeches to be given arrives. Yes, it does. The students begin to quiet as they look at you expectantly. Well, shall we? Uh, truth be told, I'm not sure quite what to... Ahem! Roxanne! I am so happy to see a splendid turnout for your election. Whatever the result, whoever is elected, you have all done a great thing for the student body's representation already. Yeah, bros, but how'd you do it? The auditorium's like full up. But when we ran, there were only like six or 60 or 70 people there. Alex had the genuinely inspired idea to have part of our personal campaigns be a more general encouraging of participation in the voting process. That's a good idea. Perhaps we should have done something similar back in the day. It's undeniable that your efforts have already endeared you to the student body. I have a good feeling about your council, Caleb. My council? <laughs> well, we'll see. We've yet to be elected. Speaking of which, like, what exactly should we do? Just head up onto the stage? Yes, that would work, but would you allow us one last indulgence? Indulgence? You do not know what mark we've had on Kobocon. Admittedly, it was not a large one. But we still like the old school, you know? And all our old friends left a month ago, so we, like, we want to say goodbye. Of course, Roxanne's preferred method of saying hello and farewell is speeches, while Brawley and I's preferred method is, well, listening to Roxanne's speeches. Faulkner? I'll miss them, Roxanne. And I'll miss the humor and enthusiasm you brought to this job, Brawley. I hope to visit you two in Hoenn someday. Perhaps if I'm unable to become a police officer in Violet City, I'll move to Hoenn and try again. We might meet again that way. Oh man. Is it kind of bad that I want you to fail, just so that can happen? Not at all. I rather do as well. Of course, there's no chance of that in one year. I've never seen you panic, exaggerate, lie, or abuse your powers. There's quite legitimately no one better suited to be a police officer than you, Faulkner. Much as I might be tempted to selfishly root for your failure, too. <clears throat> oh, sorry, yes. So yes, if you would permit it, we would like to give our farewell speech to open the event. Of course, our farewell speech will contain commendations of your virtue. Your plural, naturally. I have no objections. Counsel. Je fus en prie. Go ahead, please. Yeah, fine. Why should I fight that? It's a lovely idea. No complaints here. Thank you very much, from the bottom of my heart. I feel very confident knowing I'm leaving this ship in your capable hands. I'm sure you do, Roxanne. Well, this feels familiar. They've even got the same music playing. <laughs> Let's take our seats. The old student council will indicate when it's time for us to come up. Dibs on sitting next to you. Dibs on the aisle seat. Seriously, girl, chill. <laughs> Good afternoon, my own friends. I apologize for what is likely to be a drawn-out and excessively sentimental speech. 
I've been told my speeches flip-flop between inspirational and insomnia curing with frightening suddenness, and I fear that today's will be no exception. So in the interest of brevity and a graceful handling, handing over of the reins, I will summarize my thoughts in two to three word bites. And to express my gratitude to the two men who have been my side for the, <laughs> for the past year, men I have grown to trust and love, I will allow them to provide the first four words of the six. Faulkner? It seems a shame to only speak my mind now at the end. What stories I might have been privy to if only I were to remain. What adventures you might have seen by my side if only we'd been friends before it was time to leave. Oh well. Ladies, gentlemen, and distinguished lovers of Copacon Academy, you have been here only one month. From this, you may believe that you have a great understanding of what life at Cobacon may entail. Allow me to assure you of one thing. Your eyes see only the tip of the iceberg. Your time at Cobacon will be far grander in scope and massive in scale than you might ever have dreamed. My two words are thank you. Thank you for allowing us to see you spread your wings at the very end of our time here. Brawley. Man, I'm trying not to cry. Me too! Oh hell, I'll cry in front of everyone here. I'm a man, I've earned that right. Bros, my words are carry on. This year is gonna suck sometimes. One fifth of you won't even graduate. But that's why you gotta keep going. Any wall that you come up against, you just gotta muscle through. And there's no fight you can't win if you don't stop punching. Sometimes you're gonna fail. But that's alright. You can do everything right and still come up short. Maybe you're not strong enough, or smart enough, or maybe in nine months, your Pokemon still isn't listening to you. <sighs> That's alright, bros. Take it from Big Brother Brawley. You can do this. You can graduate. And you can do anything you want as long as you're willing to break through everyone and everything in your way. And if one of you out there thinks that this doesn't apply to you because the one in your way is yourself, hey, who the hell do you think you are? You think you can keep yourself down like that? Hell no, brother man. If you gotta break yourself to get where you wanna go, you can. Break through yourself and be the best that you can be. I believe in you. Carry on. <sighs> Alright, I'm done. Roxy? You should have given speeches more often, Brawly. Nah, gotta keep all that passion in for when it matters. Now go on. What are your two words? Stay true. We weren't the most successful student council. Now, at the end of our year, I can clearly see the mistakes we made and the wrong paths we took. But... But we stayed true. We kept our truth in the forefront of everything we did, as we strove towards our ideals. It does not do for a leader to deny reality and seek out only what they believe should be. By the same token, a leader with no imagination, no conception of an ideal world, has no reason to lead. This is not something that applies only to a student council. You, as Pokemon trainers, researchers, coordinators, breeders, you will all work with teams of Pokemon and people. You too are leaders. People will rely on you. The wills and desires of others will push you and pull you. Your fork in the road may lead off in dozens of different directions, and you'll have a dozen different people all urging you on in a different road. When it's impossible to know which road to take, there's just one thing you need to remember. Stay true. Believe in the truth you see, and follow the road that leads you to your ideals. Thank you. For a moment's silence. Then... It's got me going a bit! That was a powerful speech! <laughs> so, I've done a lot of voice acting in my time. I've done shows and plays and theatre and musicals and radio plays. And every single time, when I'm reading something that genuinely has passion and emotion poured into it, it gets you. The emotion jumps off of the pages and kind of embodies itself throughout you. And reading that, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it like right, right here. Like right here in my chest. Oh man. Hmm, that may have been the most positive feedback I've ever gotten for one of my speeches. Lesson learned too late, I suppose. Well, we thank you for lending your ears as we indulge our sentimentality. But let's not forget who this event is truly for. We, the student current, <laughs> the current student council of Cobacon, are proud to present the student council hopefuls for this next year. 
We believe firmly that they are the best possible students you could choose to represent, guide, and fight for you over the coming 11 months. Faulkner? Aye. Brawley? Aye. Very well. These six student council hopefuls, Calum, Alex, Serena, Jasmine, Grusha, and Sharen, have the unilateral, official, and unequivocal endorsement of we, the student council proper. Phew, that's a weight off my mind. Now why don't you join me in inviting your student council hopefuls onto the stage. Please welcome... Hmm? You turn around in your seat as you look behind yourself and see a student in the back of the room, out of breath, bent double, and panting wildly. Wait, is that... Uh, uh, there's... Uh, uh, I can't hear what that red-headed girl's saying, Faulkner. I believe that's a man. Okay, but what's he saying? I can't be too sure. He's too far away to tell. Like, how can you be sure she's a dude, then? I can't, but based on the evidence, I... Outside, there's... You need to get strong battlers and... Why do you care so much if he's a man or a woman? Or something else, we mustn't forget that possibility. Oh yeah, I had a friend like that in Hoenn. Great surfer. You met them, right, Roxy? Yes, I... Do you mind? Uh, not particularly, no. I stopped being a student council member about two minutes ago, so now I really have no obligation to listen to anyone's complaints ever again. Well, I do intend to become a teacher when I return to Hoenn, but until then, I... Outside! People! Attacking the school! Thugs! Do something! Oh, well, yes, we should uh, probably get a teacher or... What are we standing around for? Let's go! Hmm? What do you mean? Come on, people are attacking the school. We're trying to prove to the school we'll fight for them. Let's go out there, kick their asses, come back in and bask in the applause. Oh, shouldn't we leave that to the teachers? Of all of us, I figured you could do it the boost most. I don't think I need it, really. If those are actual criminals out there, I think we should probably just stay safe in here. No, no, Grusha's right. This is an excellent opportunity for some showmanship, as well as the chance for us to test ourselves in a real battle. We simply must take advantage of it. Right, Caleb? I'm not sure. Alex, your input. Wait, where did he go? Uh, I mean, the whole reason I suggested we go out and handle this was because he already ran out, so yeah. <sighs> Merd. I think that means death or something in French. He is a bit of an instigator, isn't he? I suppose we'd better follow him then. Let's go, let's kick some thug's ass. Hey, what are you doing here? What am I- I'm a student here. What are you doing here? Hey, wouldn't you like the no punk? Look, just get out of here. Your boss will blow his lid if he knows you're attacking the school in broad daylight. What well, a boss doesn't know won't hurt him. And actually, hey, don't I recognize you from somewhere? I have no idea, but I might have beaten you in a battle before. Yeah, that was it. Well, I've been real mad about that ever since. So I think I'm gonna give you a little what for. And you like that, huh? Get off of my campus. He's passionate. All right, boss man, what's the plan? Where are we going? They don't appear to be doing much more than minor property damage and intimidation. We should be safe. Alex is doing well enough on his own for now. However, everyone else should split up into pairs, seek out the attackers and defeat them. Obviously, do not hurt them. If you can get that information from them, why they're doing this, who their leader is, then do so. But do not overextend. Stay within eyesight of another pair. There's five of us here. So there are. I'll wait until Alex is done with his battle, then join him. Thank you. Team, split up. Meanwhile... Let's go! Let's do our bit for the school, gang! Oh my god, Ryan's about to get his ass kicked. Oh my god, he lived. Well done, Ryan. Maybe I should have tail whipped. Maybe, maybe tail whipping was the play there. Uh, Chiggery, get your ass out there. And it's time to mud slap everything into submission. Uh, start with the Skaroopy. No, don't start with the Skaroopy because it's neutral. Start with the Stunky. Oh, I killed Chiggery. Damn it. Okay. Uh, fuck, that's not good. Uh, damn. 
I can't really use Ivy here because these are poison types. Uh, no, I can use Ivy. Because what we'll do, we'll leech seed both of them. It missed. God damn it, Ivy. Come on, Ivy. Hit your move. Thank you. Right, and now you leech seed the other one too. Nice. Ah, poisoned me. Okay. Uh, I should be able to outheal the poison. So I'm going to ardent gaze them both too. Yeah, because we're going to outheal this poison. Uh, we're not going to outheal it if we're getting damaged at the same time. So it's time to start draining kissing this stunky. Uh, okay. I think we're fine. We drain and kiss again. There we go. That's down. It misses. Now we just got to drain and kiss this. Boom. IV is broken. All right. I forgot that these guys don't play uh, play fair. Another ambush double battle, huh? What? What? You're way too strong. Get out of here. <laughs> the roughneck leaves in a panic, throwing his wallet behind himself. You assume this is out of habit, given Silver's report on the Throg's prediction for gamble battles. You gain 277 Poké Dollars. Well, every little counts. Alex, Caleb told us to split up and take out the gang members. I'm here to provide backup. Hell yeah. Though it appears my efforts were not necessary. Well battled, Alex. Nice. Good to have you, Shiren. This guy was no problem, but I'll appreciate your backup with the others. Right. Take the lead and I will follow. Right. Looks like there's a couple in the gardens. Let's go. I need to heal! I don't have any healing items. I should have bought some. Yeah, with a handful of these orange berries, I sell it tonight. It's gonna be delish. Those berries are for Pokemon. Specifically, the Pokemon of students at this school. Uh-oh, bro. Looks like there's a couple punks here. We should probably handle them before we stuff our pockets full of these berries, you know? Eh, I'll battle and eat berries at the same time. No rules. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get my ass kicked here. Because I've only got Barrow and a very, very damaged and poisoned Ivy to really go off of. So, let's get rid of this Krogunk as quickly as we can. Uh, yeah, we've got to try and deal with this Krogunk quickly. Okay, it's, we're both poisoned. Maybe I future sight the Krogunk, actually, and then just start assist. I'm going to see what assist does. Dive! Hell yeah. Nice. Okay, uh, quick attack the Grimer. Uh, Purloin's dead, okay. Uh, you got a Carvana? Why are your Pokemon so weak? Uh, let's go to the Pidov, I guess. It's only got Fly. Why has it only got Fly? Nice, okay, we're fine, we're fine. Wait, what? Disable stops my Future Sight from hitting! That's stupid! That's not how it works in the game, is it? That's not how it works in the main series. That can't be! I'm, I'm baffled if that is. Oh god, I'm in trouble now then. And, yep, I'm in a lot of trouble. Oh god, okay. Uh, draining kiss the Grimer, I guess. It's a scraggy. Okay, if Ivy lives, I can at least drain and kiss the Scraggy to get a bunch of health back and potentially kill it. Nice. Ivy's still busted. And we can kill this thing too. Nice. Sneasel comes out and takes a hit. And then we can drain and kiss that too. Uh, fly onto the Sneasel. Okay, I think we're fine. Ivy still, once again, is just showing why it's so busted. Ivy is just insane. Hey, that ain't no fair. You guys are trained to battle. We just figured it out on our own. Bloody elitists. If we didn't keep losing Pokemon battles, we could afford to go to Cobra Khan too. The Roughnecks leave in a panic, throwing a wad of cash behind them. Why did they... I mean, we didn't ask for that. No, nope, but I'm not complaining. Do you want half? Uh, no. No, thank you. I'm good. You gained 327. We're at 11k now. Alright, where to next? I think I hear a commotion coming from the battle hall. Right, let's go. There's more. Janine. 
Oh my god, I need to see this. Hey girly, you better cough up your money. Yeah, yeah, and your Pokemon too. Don't make this hard on us. Give us all your stuff or we'll mu- <laughs> Give us all your stuff or we'll- We'll, we'll mug you. Yeah, we'll mug you real good. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are we gonna do? Let's mug him! <laughs> Any Viva La Dirt League fans out there, you're legends. <laughs> I'm struggling to find the words to explain how much shit you're in. Hey, uh, guys, we outnumber her three to one, but she's like super chill about this. Yeah. Actually, isn't she one of those people who comes to our alley and beats up on us? I'm kind of thinking that maybe we should, like, go. Huh, so she does that too. <sighs> Look, attacking the school like this is a massive idiotic mistake. But I still want to be able to go to the alley and blow off steam every once in a while. And I can't do that if you guys get arrested. So I'm going to close my eyes, and when I open them, Alex and his friend over there will have kicked your ass, and you'll be gone. Got it? Oh, she saw us. Hey, the scary lady told us to fight you instead of her, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, give us your money or we'll mug you. <laughs> or we'll mug you. <laughs> Bro, you don't know what mugging is, do you? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. That's a that's a mighty enter and a dust ox and a beedrill. Oh, my God. Uh, I think we might be in trouble here, fellas. Well, I think the very least we can do is try and try and deal with that mighty Edda, I guess. Uh, I don't like this at all. We might be able to take it out if we're lucky. Oh, we got no draining kisses left. We are in so much shit. Right, it's time to set up the leech seed farm. Maybe I can take Maybe I can take some hits that way. Okay. Uh, Carvana, Lillipup. Let's go Pidov. It's got fly. It's probably the best. Probably the best play. Uh, now we leech seed. Well, Mightyena, I guess. And then fly onto the dust ox. Oh, we missed. God damn it. And we've lost Ivy. Okay. We're in so much shit. We're in so much duty right now. Ah, uh, we are in so much trouble. Go on, Lily Pup. Ugh, okay. Dig onto the mighty Enner if you can. Nope, we are we are screwed. The fact that we can't heal between battles is just so so nasty. Yep, it's just so nasty. Oh god. Ah, beat them down, sicko mode. Yeah, we marked them so hard. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to bring the mood down, but doesn't that mean that scary lady's gonna kick our asses now? Uh, I don't know. Is that what that means? Yes. Uh, yeah, we were uh, we were just leaving. The roughnecks will quickly shuffle out of the room. I don't suspect I'll ever understand the criminal mind. All right, are they gone? Uh, yeah. Good. Hopefully, they ran off and told their buddies that they were in over their heads. I should probably get a little involved, damn it. I was meant to be having a meeting with the Dean in a couple minutes, though. Alright, Scram. I'll clean up here. You're doing that election, right? Go back to that. I've got the invasion covered. You aren't going to vote? Sorry, I saw your posters, but none of that stuff affects me. Really? Even Grusha's International Battle Tournament? I would have thought that would be a great stepping stone for your champion attempt. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go for that this year. You guys seem to have it covered. Hopefully I can appoint one of your captain and finally launch my own attempt next year. Besides, you know how many once-in-a-lifetime international battle tournaments I've been through? Stay at Kobacon for three years like me and even shooting stars seem common. Fair enough. Is it really alright to just leave the invasion in your hands though, ma'am? Not a ma'am, and yes, don't worry, just go. Well, if you say so. Wait, you, the one who's not Alex. Sharen. Your team, it has a pretty particular composition. Er, uh, yes. I see what you're going for. 
It's an older strategy, but it's pretty clever. Thank you. My training skill is below average. Even with my roommate's help, I couldn't get up to the level I should be, so I hope to offset that with some strategy. Good luck. Hmm. Huh. What was that about? She wants him for the battle team. Heading outside of the battle hall, you can see the backs of several identically dressed men and women quickly retreating from the school campus. It seems your efforts, in combination with Janine's reputation, have succeeded in driving away the invasion. You and Sharen notice a gathering of people at the baseball field, and you quickly sprint across to get there. My team's dead, though! Welcome back. Is everyone alright? Yes. We had a little trouble, but nothing that seemed excessively dangerous. I saw you creeping along the back there, Silver! <laughs> I'm glad. From the ports we've heard, it seemed that the leader of this little expedition was in the battle hall when he was driven off. <laughs> what are you doing?! <laughs> Yeah, I think we fought him. He had a pretty big mighty Anna. You fought him? Yeah, we didn't beat him, but Janine scared him off. Weird. What is it? Well, someone must have gotten confused because about 20 minutes ago we heard that Alex single-handedly defeated the leader of the invasion. Huh? Yeah, and we heard Sharen went out like a punk. That's an exact quote. We also heard he didn't do shit. Another direct quote there. I mean... That's a libelous accusation. Alex and I both lost against the invader's boss. I fully believe you, but the fact is, the rumor has spread quite far amongst the student body already, and... Looking over at the gathering of students at the baseball field, you see many admiring glances and bashful whispers thrown your way. Even more than usual, that is. <laughs> That's... Stop sneaking around, you little creep! <laughs> Someone must have had s someone must have had some sort of motivation to spread a lie about who was responsible for fighting off the invaders then. But who could that be? Who would have a reason to engage in such a conspiracy? Ooh, is it one of us? Is there a Machiavellian bad actor? An evil imposter amongst us? That seems unlikely. I'm sure it was one of the other students who simply heard a report and in the excitement and confusion misreported it. That does that seem like the most likely option to you, sir? Does it really? Well, yes. Yes, it does. More likely than someone having a vendetta against you while wanting to prop up Alex. It's not like he needs it anyway. Fascinating. I look forward to hearing more of your wisdom and insights when you are my president, Calum. I'm... I'm sorry. Did something happen that I'm not aware of? I will discuss it later. Now isn't the time. We still need to return to the auditorium so we can give our pre-election speeches, after all. Very well, but if there's anything you'd like to discuss with us, please do let me know. I assure you, I will. It's kind of hard to differentiate Caleb and Shiren. Like, in terms of voice acting. Like, their, their voices that I've given them are very similar to each other, so that when I'm doing conversations between the two of them, it makes it very difficult. The student council hopefuls march back up to the auditorium, a large group of followers in tow. Upon opening the doors... Woo, yeah! <laughs> I figured as much. <laughs> Cheering. For us. Not every day that the people trying to get sworn in as the student body's fighters and defenders actually prove they can do it. Though it does look like they're mostly looking at you, Alex. Seems rumors spread quickly. Ah, jeez. Hey, I should I just, like, set the record straight? Tell everyone what really happened before we begin the actual thing? Hmm, perhaps, but it doesn't hurt to have a spotless figurehead adored by the masses. They get on a bit thick, aren't we? You're back! Thank goodness. What happened? I looked away for half a second, and you were all gone, and Brawley had bent a skinhead into the shape of a pretzel. <laughs> Minor invasion of school grounds by some punks from the city. Must have known that for a couple of minutes there wasn't going to be a student council, so they were hoping to capitalize on our moment of weakness. Are you suggesting there's a mole in Kobokan? Another imposter? How thrilling! <laughs> uh... Say, shouldn't we get on with the election? I think we've held it off long enough at this point. Right you are. Roxanne, thank you for the lovely introduction. Hmm, remember? Thank you. Carry on and stay true. Wise words, upperclassmen. Merci. Continue. Rest vrai. Rest vrai. I, I, yeah, that's that's not it. I'll, I'll, I need to brush up on my French accent. <clears throat> okay. 
Uh, there's a little step here, hmm? Ahem. Classmates and friends, apologies for the delay. A group of vagabonds from the city seem to think that now would be a good time to knock over our pottery. I mean, I agree with him entirely, but damn, this feels pretty classist. Thankfully, the quick thinking and measured response of the student council hopefuls, as, many of you, as well as many of you, was able to prevent things from spiraling out of control. Well done, everyone. Yeah! <laughs> It is this exact collaborative spirit that we hope to continue and encourage in our future dealings. Let me be clear. We stand united. Every one of us seeks to support and uplift every other one of us. There is no reason to abstain from voting for any one of us. We even have experience working together already. We all aim to work together to give you, the student body, more privileges, freedoms, powers, and security than before. I, for my part, aim to massively increase funding to the clubs in this school. We all owe the battle team a, debt, a great debt of gratitude, of course. It is internationally famous, and with famous champions such as Lance, Cynthia, and Stephen Stone graduating from it, its reputation is clearly well-deserved. So just imagine what we could do if some of our tuition money, even a fraction, was diverted into other clubs. Imagine if Kobacon elected to hire champions to lead their other clubs, such as they did with Lance and the battle team. Hmm, yes. It's quite simple. The sky is the limit. And if you vote for me, not only will I work to support and uplift my co-council members, I'll fight to spread the school's funding more equitably. Well, that went well. Brevity is the soul of wit. Now, does anyone have any questions? Yes, you, in the red hat. Each student council gives their speeches, one after another, making sure to emphasize the support that each of them will give each other. Serena's speech was enthusiastic and passionate. Jasmine's was earnest and heartwarming. Grusha's was typically cool. And Sharen's was normal. Though, though you thought you saw it. Though you, oh my god. Though you thought you saw darkness cross his face once or twice. I'm not sure about that wording. Doesn't feel like that's the best way to describe what Sharen's plot is or like how he was portraying it. I don't know. Finally, it was your time to speak. By this time, the audience has worked itself up into a complete frenzy and they're practically salivating to hear what you have to say. Admittedly, you could have prepared your speech a bit better, but you've been awfully busy recently. All right, I'm just going to wing this. <clears throat> All right, right, Cobalcon, listen up, dickheads. This is what's happening. Academians. Uh, yeah, you guys are gonna like... <laughs> really? <laughs> I haven't even said a thing yet. I'm going to fight for you. Not violently, of course. Hey, this speech giving thing is easy. Very <laughs> yell unintelligible but enthusiastic gobbledygook. <laughs> Oh, the primal urge to click this and see what happens. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> As you continue your speech, you notice Sharen to your right, giving you a strange look. Upon further inspection, Caleb and Serena are too. It seems the overly enthusiastic response to your tepid speech received <laughs> did not escape your fellow student council hopefuls. <laughs> Sorry guys, Frenergy. Not much I can do about it. But hey, this could be a good thing. At least I can use it to help people. And that's pretty much it. Vote for us. We'll do good, I promise. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Hmm? Please excuse me. Uh, yeah. What's up, man? I was just wondering when you were going to tell us about your power. No. Does he know? <laughs> it's that meme that, does he know? <laughs> what? I think that we should discuss the way that you're so easily able to endear yourself to the other students. The way you won the selection without having given any effort towards it whatsoever. The way you command Pokemon you've never met before and have them listen to you immediately. The way you got into this school. I think it's important the voters hear about this. This will definitely affect their votes, no? I... I... It was a pleasure, and for me, and for others, to watch your meteoric rise, Alex. 
but there's something everyone seems to have forgotten. Meteors don't rise, they fall. Shiren, what do you think you're doing? My best. That's all I've ever been able to do. Whatever disagreements you may have with Alex can be handled off stage. You're just threatening your own chances. Come back here and... I recuse myself. Huh? I no longer seek election. My sole interest is uncovering the truth. Uh, guys, I don't think now's the... But be that as it may, there's a time and a place for everything. And now is not the place to toss out such wild accusations with no backing or... You ask for evidence? I'll give you evidence! Look at this man! The guilt in his eyes! Do you dare tell me I'm wrong? Does anyone? His feelings are written as plainly as pen on paper. This can't possibly be true. Right, Alex? Oh, shit. Silence. What a surprise. How do you think he gained so many friends so quickly? It's been one month, and yet seemingly everybody in this school knows him, admires him, loves him. We are all throttled by his red string. Every one of us, hang him like puppets from his hands. You're willing to entertain so many conspiracy theories, but not this one? You're unwilling to accept that you've been duped? Shiren, what you're saying just isn't possible. Isn't it? Do espers not exist? Are their powers not known to take a great many forms? Yes, that's all circumstantial evidence, but if all I'm saying is lies, why isn't he saying anything? Well, Alex, deny it. It won't let me deny it. Your tongue lies heavy and powerless in your mouth. Your throat is dry. Your lips crack under the scorching heat of the stage lights above. You cannot speak. Deny it! Deny it! Damn you, just deny it! Prove me wrong! Make of me a crackpot in front of this whole school! Ruin my reputation, my plans, my future! Destroy me! Just deny it! You cannot speak. In the crowd, you see a lip begin to curl in disgust. Someone coughs awkwardly and gets up to leave the auditorium. The sound of a camera clicking rings through the silence. Guys, please, I need... I, I'm having... I'm begging you, Alex. Deny it. Please. I need to be wrong. You cannot speak. Well, that's that then. Hey, unless a camera recorded him doing any of the stuff you think he did, then he's innocent. I've seen trash like this in tabloids about me, and they never have any proof. You want proof? If you don't take Alex's silence as proof, then your closeness to Alex binds, uh, blinds you. Rosa, the famous movie star. I'm sure you can't think of any reasons why he'd want to get close to you. Sure, you think that he's an awful actor who barely knew you before he met you a while ago, but did it never occur to you that someone might simply act as though they're bad at lying? There's no way anyone can deny that this debate is over. Now, what kind of messed up hypothesis is that? You're cooking up something real nasty, Sharin. Do you have any proof to back up what you're saying? Silence isn't proof. He refuses to speak on his own defense. Why would an innocent man ever refuse to defend himself? Is it for someone else? Is he defending you? You might think so, but I very much doubt it. You specifically are far too biased to speak clearly on this matter. One has to wonder what happens during the time you spend alone with him. <gasps> no, you are not accusing May of cheating right in front of Brendan. One has to question if he's really helping you with your issues, or if he has his own agenda that your current status does not comply with. Your arguments are weak and thin. I can tell you doubt him yourself. There's nothing else to prove. Hey, no the hell it isn't. You need some proof. Stop demanding proof. Do I need to provide proof when the accused doesn't even ask for it? And I find it rich that you, of all people, are asking for proof. Pardon me for not taking your character judgment of the person you are so obviously infatuated with seriously. Enough. Enough. Alex. Any comments? Your friends are doubting you. A thousand repressed memories scream to be acknowledged. Years of loneliness wait behind the barrier of your presumed innocence. 
but to maintain that innocence would require you to lie. To speak. You cannot speak. You ask for proof. You all demand proof. Fine, fine. You two. <gasps> Those two? These two have the proof you crave. Yes, we do. And believe us, we were terrified when we found out the truth. When we learned this seemingly innocent man had been warping us and manipulating us from within our own minds this entire time, I nearly broke down. He was a good friend. To think he'd betray us in this manner is unconscionable. Where is the proof? You said you had it. It might be more accurate to say we know how to take it. What? Come on, get up here, witch! <gasps> Wait, what are you- what are you two doing? Oh, it's quite simple. This lovely lady here is an esper who has a bad habit of reading our minds. Yes, she's like a wonderful piñata of secrets. Now what do you suppose will come out if we break this piñata, hmm? What? No, absolutely not. Alex is who we're trying to prove the guilt of, not- not Sabrina, or- Terribly sorry, partner, but this is the only proof we could find. So why don't you just sit back and let us handle this, hmm? Well, tell us about Alex. Tell us about his powers. Don't spare any details, or we'll know you're working with him. You're... you're crazy. I don't know. He doesn't have anything. Quit that bullshit! Yeah, we know you're covering for him. Caleb? Huh? What? I mean, what do I... Ugh, fine. You two, stop that immediately, or I'll report you to the office of the Student Council on Conflict Resolution. I'll break your heads. N no don't fight. Please, just leave me alone and... Spill, witch! Tell us about the freak, or you're next. No, I... no, just... Oh... Leave me alone. Every breath I take is agony. I wish I was dead. I'm not qualified to be here. I want to kill. I'm not a good person. I'm sick and tired of this. I'm too late to help. I love her. I can't afford to lose her again. Every breath I take is agony. Secrets flit through your mind as Sabrina's telepathy opens up, sending memories, shadows, dark, repressed desires echoing in a thousand voices through the heads of everyone present. And then, in a familiar voice, I have a power. It makes people trust me. And my Pokemon obey my commands. I need to keep it a secret from everyone. If they found out about it, I'd lose all my friends. And I'll do anything to make sure that never happens again. No! Well, there you have it. Undeniable proof that Alex has a power he's been hiding from us. Why? Why did you? How could you be so cruel? Us? You're the freak who means reads our minds and hoards our secrets. It's your fault for even coming here in the first place. Yes. Yes, this was foolish of me. To think I could have a life. My mentor would tell me not to do this. He would say that this is revenge, that I'm proving myself the witch you think I am. I suppose I have no longer have a reason to cast my spells. So here is my curse, your secret. Don't you! They are siblings. And lovers. What the f- there's an Adam Sandler film called That's My Boy that has one quote that I think I'm going to play you a clip of right about now. Chad, adultery is bad, mm -hmm. but incest is bad now! <laughs> oh my god. What? No, no. we're... We're just step-siblings, there's no blood, there's... Shut up, you idiot! Let's get out of here! This... this isn't what... You are a 
fucking shithead, you know that, Shiren? You asshole! I've never heard her speak like that. Sabrina? Why are you... What What happened to your accent? Wait, wait, Caleb, I, I can explain! Jasmine. Jasmine, help. It's happening. Again, my heart, it's happening. What? No, Grusha, hold on. I'll get, I'll get a nurse. No time. No, I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Gotta get to infirmary. Feeling faint. Shit. <gasps> Grusha! Oh, I'm just a project, is that it? Oh, wait, Flan, come on. You know there's more to it than that. Ah! How very disappointing. If you wish to preserve what little dignity you have less, I trust you know. I trust you know what to do with Axe. You cannot speak. Tell me this isn't true, Alex. Tell me this is just a, a bad script. You're about to yell cut any moment now. You cannot speak. Come on, Alex, please tell me that you can explain this. You cannot speak. Hey, come on, tell me this isn't true. Shit. You cannot speak. Oh my god. Did I just get the bad end or something? You cannot speak. Right, I've mentioned this a couple of times. But this game's usage of its mechanics and its like its UI is impeccable. It's making use so well of the little things like the minus tens, the minus fives, whatever. Like it's making such good use of those. Like using them as actual like expressions of uh, of well writing. It's incorporating the game's UI and mechanics into it. I just think that is so clever. But my God. What's just happened? <laughs> Did I genuinely just get like a bad ending or something? The game's... is it stuck? No. Oh my god, okay. So... I think that crazy cliffhanger is where I have to leave this episode. Oh, you are no longer you. You know what? No, let, let's, let's do this for a minute. You are no longer you. You wake up from a nightmare. It's the same old one. You barely register it anymore. You yawn, check in the time on your clock. It seems you've woken up early. Well, relatively early. Still, it's a Sunday. It's not like you have anything going on. You slowly pull yourself out of bed. Your four roommates are gone. Of course, it's so late in the day it could only be expected. Your little electric partner jumps into your bag as you swing it over your shoulder. You ponder what they might be serving in the cafeteria. Maybe they're still serving breakfast. You could get a late lunch or something. You yawn again, but a minor electric shock from your bag reminds you that you're not, o you're not the only hungry one in the room right now. As you walk into the cafeteria, you hear a low, disgruntled murmuring sound echoing from your classmates. You ignore it, as no one looks at you. You find an empty table and sit down to eat by yourself, picking at some leftover waffles. It's only noon, but you already feel like you've wasted your entire day. You decide to take a nap. Perhaps when you wake up, you'll feel more prepared to handle what comes next. Hey! You blearily blink the sleep out of your eyes and look up to see a familiar girl standing over the table, glaring down at you. Are you just going to sleep there and pretend there isn't a big elephant in the room? What are we going to do? You raise an eyebrow at the girl. She seems to have some very strong feelings about something you aren't familiar with. Sounds like a whole lot of not your problem. You shrug and prepare to go back to sleep. Ethan! Whoa, what? Oh my, oh, I'm Ethan. I figured as much. <clears throat> what are we going to do? Look, Leaf, I don't know what you're talking about, but I can't help you with whatever it is you've got, that, that's got you like this. 
My name's Leaf, not Leaflet. And I thought you were like his best friend. Man, I'm not anybody's best friend. Do you at least know where he is? Yeah, uh, maybe I wasn't clear. Who are you talking about? H who? Are you kidding me, Ethan? Alex, your roommate. Wh whoa, what's with the passion? No, I don't know where he is. It's Sunday, he's probably out studying or training or something. It's not like I keep tabs on him. Oh, right, so it's a total coincidence that you always end up in the same places. You just coincidentally end up doing everything he does. Hey, he might be copying me. Like, you know, those Pokemon he picked during the egg hunt? Yeah. I already had their exact eggs in the incubator. My old neighbor sent them to me. That's why I didn't pick up any eggs during the hunt. I already had as many that I could carry. And you can't blame me for the Dano. Someone gave us two Dano eggs at once. Sure. Why would your neighbor send you a bunch of eggs? She's a competitive breeder, and she dumps her breed checks on me. I don't know, but that's what she does, alright? Lyra, yeah. Well, fine. Maybe you aren't stalking him, but can't you at least use your connection to figure out where he is? Great. Ethan Gold, the world's best comforts for people who are better than him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't go out of my way to follow him. Heck, half of the time I get there first. Well, if you could be anywhere right now, where do you wish you were? Honestly? Home. Ugh. Yeah, sorry. Why are you even asking? Don't you have his phone number? I do, but he's not answering his phone. I haven't been able to track him down all of today or yesterday. I gave him some space yesterday, but I thought we needed to talk today. You know, nothing about you passes the Beckel... The Beckel test. Oh yeah, that's the female personality, uh, the female media character personality test, right? To prove whether they're an actual character. It's cool. What? Nothing. Anyway, what's this about giving him space? Did something happen? Uh, what? Okay, I'm getting the vibe that something did happen. Did, did you not go to the speeches? You didn't even go there to support your two roommates? Hey, I was going to. I, I was. I just didn't feel up to it. Figured it'd be better to take a nap, and maybe when I woke up, things would be better. Oh, um, then someone should probably tell you what happened. Sounds like you're going to tell me some bad news that wasn't affecting me before just now. Can I opt out? Alex has a power that makes Pokemon and people like him. That's how all of his Pokemon listen to him, and how he got so many, f so many friends. That sounds hard to believe. How did you find out? How many people know? You're going to want to be sitting down for this. I am? <laughs> Someone tells you the details of the prior day's disastrous student council election. Why? Why didn't he just lie and tell everyone Sharem was crazy? It's not that hard, it's really easy actually. It sounds like Sharem was willing to accept any lie he was told. If only Alex was willing to lie. So everyone lost track of him after the election, and no one I've talked to has been able to find him since. Well, sorry to disappoint. He wasn't there when I went to bed last night. Come to think of it, I don't think any of my roomies were, and I went to bed pretty close to, cur to curfew. We were meant to go to the city today. Crap. That's right, I was gonna have a talk with Alex about my theory. Damn. I remembered for half a second after I woke up, but I figured since he wasn't in the room that he'd cancelled on me. You didn't think to, I don't know, call him and see if your plans were still on? What? You never had any someone ghost you for some meeting you set up, but didn't actually want to go to? It's the best feeling in the world, believe me. I'm not gonna be your therapist. Hey, that's what my dad said. Ugh. He has three other roommates, right? Maybe one of them will know where he went. Wait, wait, fine. I'll help you find him. Again, it's Sunday, so we could be anywhere. Dude's a massive socialite. You should probably have noticed by now. Great, thanks. But, uh, where to then? You said you were meant to meet up in the city, right? Maybe he's out there. Without me? Sure. He went there to meet you because his phone's dead. Your way to the city. It's unlikely, but it's not it's long the before only you see a got. familiar face. Though sure. wearing an unfamiliar I'm expression. To try it. Nate! Okay. Hey, Nate! 
Nardi? Wait, what? Wait, he called him Nate. He doesn't realise he's doing it. Oh, shit. Through the eyes of Ethan, he doesn't realise he's calling people the wrong names. Nardi? Hey, MC Squared. I'm kind of busy right now. Yeah? What are you doing? Looks to me like you're just looking at that statue. Having a good conversation? I don't... I mean, I didn't... <sighs> Elucidating? That's a gnarly word. Hold on. You were asking me questions about Tia, then you started asking me questions about Alex. Aren't you Sharen's roommate? Were you spying on Alex for him? Tia? Who's that? No, no, I, I wasn't spying on him. <sighs> okay, well, I was, but it wasn't for Sharan. I didn't even know what that asshole was... I didn't even know that asshole was working with him. You gotta believe me. That guy in purple came up and offered a trade. I had no idea what he'd do with what I told him. I just needed some information, and he had it. What did you tell him to get that information, Nate? Look, I just... I just told him how to access the security camera footage from the laboratory security cameras. It's not that big a deal. I didn't, like, tell them any secret passwords or anything. All that information's publicly available through the school security room. You just have to walk in there and ask for the recordings. Oh yeah, we were going to do that for our first week here when we thought Alex's bag was stolen. If that was all you did, why are you looking so guilty? You've been asking me a bunch of questions about Tia and Alex. You were asking ha Ethan a bunch of questions too, weren't you? Huh? How'd you know? Oh, gotcha. The only reason someone would hang out with me is if they wanted something. I see where you're coming from now. Yeah, you're right. MC squared? Well, Nate, you didn't just tell him how to get some publicly accessible information. There's something more. <clears throat> Look, ah. Uh... I knew what he was going to find. I watched the vids first, but I didn't think he was going to do something like that. I mean, he couldn't exactly try to make some sort of argument that A got into the school unfairly without turning a massive lens on himself, right? I didn't think he'd be that stupid. What did the video show? Not falling for that one again. I purged the database, I magnetized the tapes, and put three-factor authentication that has to go through me on any future information requests. Great. So now that the ship is sinking, you think you can just stuff a towel in the holes and we'll forgive you? I don't particularly care for your forgiveness. I just want Alex's. Or at least the chance to apologize. I've really screwed things up for him. What information did you want so desperately that you were willing to burn down Kobacon to get it? I can't tell you that. Why the hell not? I can't tell you that either. Look, you can't tell anybody about this, but I'm pretty sure there's a dangerous Pokemon hiding out in the forest. Everyone here could be in danger. Now, I know some people who can subdue the Pokemon, but if I'm going to convince them to come here, I need to know where the Pokemon is, how powerful it is, and when there will be no one around. Understand? This is bigger than a college student's small secrets. I'll trade away anything I need to, sh to make sure I complete my mission. You're a real piece of work. Well, since you can't get a single piece of information from two idiots without ruining everything for everyone, you can't fight off a mystery dangerous Pokemon. Excuse my disbelief. Do you at least know where Alex is? No. All well, my sources have gone silent. This whole school has. No one's talking to each other. Everyone's hiding out in their dorms. Empty classrooms. There are walls between my usual network. Ugh. Then what good are you? What good am I? Bye, Nate. It was fun while you were pretending to be interested in me. Ethan! If you're trying to convince me that you weren't just looking for information on Alex, save it. I don't know where he is, but... B might... Great. Leaf? My name's Leaf, but yeah. Nate thinks that Slappy might know where Alex is. Nacho? Who the hell is... Uh, oh, of course. If you're not Alex's stalker, then Slappy totally is. Or like you. Or Tia. Sounds to me like Sharen might have had a point. Damn, this is so sad. Fuck. 
As you walk into the battle hall, you see the person training. Sweat covers his brow and soaks through his clothes. He's clearly been working at this very hard for a long time. His Pokemon have the same sort of stony determination. They all look tired, but they're moving through their paces, attacking, defending, and counter-attacking with a resolute rhythm. Hey, Slappy! Are... You! You're the reason he went to that goddamn election! This is your fault! Hey, I didn't even go to the election! I'm not talking to you! I'm talking to Leaf! Oh. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Like I was going to say, I really didn't see a way you could blame me for this. Wait, what did Leaf do? Nothing! You just refused to step away from him for half a second so I couldn't talk to him! If I talked to him properly, he wouldn't have gone to the election! Bullshit! You could have told him not to go while I was there! What do you think I was doing? It's not like I could tell him in front of you that if you go, Shiren will tell everyone about Frenergy! What? N nothing No, you said Frenergy. Well, yeah, that's what the power is called. What, weren't you at the damn election? I wasn't, and even I know that! Don't think so, bud. Shiren never told us what the power was called. Oh, fuck. Damn! Frenergy? Is that what I have? Well, how did you... Wait. You already knew. That's what you told all of his friends back then. That's how you convince them to abandon him. Because you convinced them that he was just brainwashing them. But that wasn't even enough for you, was it? You had to go and do it again. You don't know what the hell you're talking about! Oh yeah? Because it sounds to me like you were sick of being second best to Alex, so you blasted Alex's reputation again. But let Sharen take the fall for it this time. Shut up! No one listens to me! No one! So how the hell was I supposed to know Shiren actually was? What? You saw how Alex was at the battle team on Friday, mouthing off to Lance like that? Oh, I'm on the left side of the room. I hate that dumb country boy shtick of his. We're from the same damn town, but he acts like he grew up riding Raihan and milking Tauros. Uh-huh. So yeah, I was complaining to Shiren, and I told him that Alex gets anything he wants, and everyone pays attention to him just because of who he is. That he's just had everything he ever wanted handed to him. Wait, so... So Shiren asked if that seemed unusual to me, like he had some sort of power, and I said yeah, because what kind of idiot would think it was an actual power? I've said shit like that hundred times and no one's ever listened to me, no one's ever cared that it's unfair, so how the hell was I supposed to know that this one time someone was listening? I was just... I was just venting! Seems pretty sus. Shut the fuck up, Ethan! Wow. Why are you so mean to Ethan? Jesus! Well, great job. You ruined his life again. You and Nate. Nate? What did that ed egghead? The lab security cameras. God damn it, Gramps! What I don't get is how you knew he had this power in the first place. Think about it, Ethan. If those purple students wanted to see the video footage from the research lab, then Alex must have been there, probably talking to someone. Who do we know Alex is close to, who hangs around the research labs, uh, research center a lot? Uh, that egghead with the proper Gaarian -ga accent? <laughs> what was her name? Sonia? God. God? No, I'm saying God! You're literally painful to talk to. Yeah, uh, some people would say the same thing about you, Princess. You're kind of 110% all the time. Well, at least I'm not 0% all the time. Oh my god, would you two shut up? Yeah, Grimms told me. Over and over and over. Believe me. There wasn't a single goddamn second when I was a kid that I wasn't being reminded that Alex had this special power that made him so much more important than me. Damn. That... I mean, you're still an enormous douchebag, but... Can it? I don't need sympathy from Alex's hanger-on and clone. Well, you're not getting it now. I was never offering it. Do you at least know where Alex is? No, but he's probably with his other student council nerd friends. I bet they're all decorating the student council room right now. Are you serious? What? You seriously think Alex, any of them, got elected? After Sabrina dropped her bombshell? There was a 20-minute riot in the auditorium. 
Lance had to step in to quiet everything. The only one of the student council hopefuls still on the stage by the time Lance stepped in was Jasmine, and I think she was three seconds away from fainting. Seriously? Uh, yeah. Why are you so surprised? I'm not used to something actually going badly for Alex. Even with my screw-up, I figured... I can assure you, Mr. Oak, that this went very poorly for everyone involved. A third of the school's student population was involved in that nonsense. The news, I imagine, has spread to the other two-thirds. And someone is going to have to clean up your messes. The school has already incurred two significant legal actions as a result of that catastrophe. I might have known that the first major crisis this year would have been... Would have... Would, yeah. I might have known that the first major crisis this year would be because of you and Alex, Blue. Hey, I just explained that... You just made an excuse. Take responsibility for your mistake. I... Advisor Lance? I cannot begin to describe how frustrated I am right now. Think very carefully about whether you... Whether what you are about to say needs to be said. Do you know where Alex is? I give good advice and the children just ignore it. No, I do not. But if he's intelligent, which there is not yet any evidence of, he'll make sure I do not know where he is for at least one week. Oh. But if I were to hazard a guess as to who might know, I would point you in the direction of Professor Oak. He seems to have a close relationship with the boy. I imagine he sees something of interest in young Mr. Wansey, though I can't imagine what. A fascinating gut flora, perhaps? Right. Thank you, advisor. Come on, Ethan. We're getting answers to this. Wait! Hmm? Did Alex freeze? Go completely silent while he was up there? Yeah. I didn't know him. Not really until he got over it, but we were kids until we were eight or so. He was silent. Huh? Not completely. He would sometimes yell or grunt or mutter something no one could hear. The doctor said he was perfectly fine. As far as they could tell, he just didn't see the need to talk. The one time I heard him say anything, it was, words are unnecessary. So you got a, an idea of the kind of kid he was. Anyway, that's when Gramps got bored of his current project and decided that curing Alex would be a great way to spend my lifetime. How did he do it? I don't know, but sometimes I wish he hadn't. Now you can't get Alex to shut up. Hey, when you find Alex, you tell him to find me, huh? I'll be right here. Now I'm not gonna stop training until I see his ugly mug and can beat it in for, us for being a hard-headed dumbass again. We need to see your grandfather then. Yeah, smell you later. I don't really see the point of me being in this scene. God, Ethan. Professor Oak. Oh? Oh yes, Miss Green. I'm sorry, Miss Green, but my office hours are closed. Please come back tomorrow after class. Wait, it's about Alex. I feared as much. Please, Professor, tell us everything. I suppose this data is irretrievably corrupted. I certainly won't be publishing any more, so I will answer three questions. What? Only three questions? I've recently spent the better part of two decades working towards an academic dead end. It's only the promise of the meteor project that you don't find me collapsed in my office smelling strongly of whiskey. My time for now is still valuable. Fine. What is Alex's power? It's a simple empathy inducer. Those around him cannot help but feel his feelings, understand his intent, truly know him. I named his power Frenergy, a kind and humble name. I believe that it would revolutionize our understanding of humanity's bonds, and our bonds with Pokémon. I did not consider that the feelings of those affected would be as strong as they are. As you have seen, in this world there are many who consider being asked to show empathy a direct attack. I should have anticipated that this power, which by its own nature could not be kept secret forever, would reveal itself damagingly. So it's not mind control? Not at all. It is kindness. Pure, concentrated, unconditional kindness, which naturally is an enormous threat to the way of things. So he wasn't mind controlling me? 
The reason I liked him so much is because he, uh, wanted that? Um, well, I cannot speak to the specifics of your particular case, but if you had a fondness for him, it's very likely he had a fondness for you, too. Knew it. All right. I'm happy. Ethan, you can ask your questions now. Huh? Uh, you asked three. Sure, but you said we can both ask three. No, I didn't. Didn't you? No. Yes. Yes? Well, if you insist. <laughs> Ethan, go ahead. Gaslighting an old man. Nice. Now all you gotta do is gatekeep and girl boss. Are you going to complain or ask your questions? Oh, I don't think I can do... I don't think I can't do both. I am quite the multitasker. Um, Professor Oak, hey. I don't think we've ever met before, but uh, Professor Cherry has told me a lot about you. She really respects you. Well, we'll see if that's the case this afternoon. I believe we teachers are meant to have a meeting to discuss the events of the student council election. Oh, and I think that I encouraged my students to go there. Right, um, here's my question. Alex and I, like, end up in the same place, doing the same thing, making the same decisions. Is that, like, a side effect of Frenergy? No. Oh? Is there, like, even a chance? No. At its most powerful, Frenergy might influence someone to follow a wielder, given the bonds of trust inherent in such a thing. But what you're de describing, a persistent, sim a persistent systematic copying effect, is outside the realm of Frenergy I've studied. Well, that's a dead end. I am mildly interested in this phenomenon you mentioned, though. Perhaps when I am able to publish my meteor thesis, I'll see what's happening to you and Alex. Great. Second place to a rock. Okay, question number two, then. Slappy told us that you told him about Frenergy. If you're trying to keep this a secret from everyone but Alex, why would you tell Slappy? Well, quite simply, he asked why I was spending so much time with his best friend. And I am a firm believer that family shouldn't have secrets from each other. You didn't think that would give him a complex? That his best friend had some sort of superpower that made people like him? That is not what Frenergy does. Why must the discoveries of science be constantly misinterpreted by the public in the least charitable fashion? In any case, no, I did not think that would give him any sort of complex. He is confident enough in himself that I dare say nothing could so much as give him reason to pause, let alone a complex. Well, old Sam's just a terrible judge of character. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about the faculty of Kobocon today. You've one more question. Right, I, uh, I really only wanted to know those two, to be honest, but, well, we've asked everyone else and no one else knew, so... Do you know where Alex is? Hmm. No. Did you check the city? Yeah, I mean, not all 90 square miles of it, but a bit. What about the battle hall? We're both battle team members. Yes, we checked the battle hall. I'm afraid I've no idea then, but if you do see him, do make sure to let me know, if you will. I'd like to talk about his place in this academy, given recent developments. Sure. No, you're not going to kick him out because someone spilled the beans with, like, out of his control. You and someone end up spending the rest of the day crossing the campus searching for Alex. She rummages through every bush in the gardens. You look in every stall in the sports center locker rooms. She even drags you up to a women's restroom near the cheer squad's changing room for some reason. Unsurprisingly, he's not there either. Eventually, the two of you awkwardly part ways with you promising to call her if Alex is back at your dorm. Of course, you don't have her number. You're almost back to your dorm when you spot a familiar man standing in a familiar garden staring up at a familiar sky. Straden. Dean? Mr. Gold. Are you alright? Oh, I keep skipping his accent. It breaks my heart, Mr. Gold. One day you're all children, fresh-faced and excited to face the world. And the next, you're men and women in a war. A war of survival against the world, against each other, against yourselves. But the stars still shine for you. Oh, they still shine for you, there's no doubt about that. But do they shine for me? Is there something I could have done differently? I disallowed faculty from attending the elections with the thought that you would be more free, more honest, 
about your thoughts and desires without the administration breathing heavily down your neck. Was that a mistake? Was I, Drayden, meant to anticipate the cruelty of men who believe themselves to be on the side of truth? I couldn't say, sir. No, I don't think anyone could. Pardon my ruminations. But what happened to those students? To everyone involved? Mr. Sharan requests to be expelled. I refused him, insisted he take responsibility for his actions. I'm unsure for now what form that responsibility will take. Whatever the case, there are hundreds of students who are scared, upset, and angry. I'm half tempted to place him in the student council and make him deal with the mess he's caused. But I think that would send the wrong message to the student body. His fate remains to be seen. Those incestuous siblings have been pulled from the school. Their parents, who are on the board of trustees, are understandably upset. I fear a phone call from the president of the university every any minute now. The worst part about this is that I wanted that to be Jesse and James as characters. Now I realize why it's not Jesse and James. I take it back. <laughs> Mr. Calum and Miss Serena have taken temporary off-campus accommodations. They likely need time to process, refocus, and prepare to face their mundane day-to-day -day once more. Miss Jasmine, though, distressed, has showed remarkable improvement today. I believe she'll be back in classes tomorrow. Mr. Grusha, however... The fall from the stage exacerbated his condition. I do hope that he recovers quickly, but his doctor recommended he spend a bit more time in the infirmary. Given the extraordinary circumstances, I've asked the previous student counselor to remain on board for as long as they're willing. I was never fond of them. A slacker who was elected purely through popularity, a woman who demanded irrational massive sweeping changes to our very academic system, and then a third sensible fellow neither of the other two listened to. But at the very least, they managed to avoid getting into a fight on stage that caused the entire student body to turn against itself. I truly didn't think that was a positive quality I should have commended them for last year. And, well, as for Mr. Wanzi, I suppose I needn't tell you what's happened to him. I tried to stop him, but whereas Sharen, at least I could cow into following who I will, it felt like there was no force in nature, no man or beast, that could move Alex from his path. Wait, what? I've been trying to figure out where Alex went all day. Oh? This is exceedingly painful for me to tell you, then. What? What do you mean, Dean? Ethan, last night, almost exactly 24 hours ago, Alex visited me in my office. He didn't say a word, but he held with him a piece of paper. Wait. Ethan. Ethan. Alex Wansey dropped out of Cobacon. Shit. Oh my god. Right, that's where we're leaving this recording. That's where we're leaving this recording. We'll get back to this very, very soon. But for now, I'm going to have to leave you on that massive cliffhanger. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and I will catch you in the next one. Look after yourselves, and bye bye Ah! What the hell? Oh my god!